What's happening, everybody? On today's show, Brad Nessler of CBS Sports is going to join us. We'll discuss his offseason as he prepares for another year in the booth alongside Gary Danielson calling the SEC on CBS. Also, we'll go around the conference as we catch you up on the latest between uh, Stoops versus Calipari at Kentucky. and he updates in the quarterback battles at Ole Miss and Auburn? Georgia with a key wide receiver injured, and it was a busy recruiting weekend once again across the SEC. Locked on SEC starts right now. Our Locked On SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's happening, everybody? Welcome into Lockdown SEC. It's great to have you guys along. We'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Lockdown College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College. Terms and conditions apply. I'm Chris Gordy. Thank you guys for making Lockdown SEC your first listen every day. Remember, Lockdown SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and at LockdownSEC.com. Let's go around the conference. Boots out to the right. Makes the handoff. Throws into the ball. What a catch. Around the conference. And coming out of the weekend, one of the big topics in college football still was the feud between John Calipari and Kentucky head coach Mark Stoops. On uh, following Saturday's scrimmage, Mark Stoops was asked about the Twitter exchange he had uh, following Calipari's public comment saying Kentucky is still a basketball school. Stoops said, I don't care about anyone's program. I stay in my lane. But when you start talking about mine and people I compete against, I'm going to defend my players. Don't demean and distract from what we've done to get to this point. He went on to say that his program wasn't born on third base and noted how many people have been involved in elevating Kentucky to its current status over the years in football. Uh, Even now, it seems uh, Coach Cal backing off his original stance, saying publicly, I said the wrong thing. Mark and I will be fine. We'll get back and talk about it. I'm not real smart. Sometimes it doesn't come out the right way. That's my Italian in me, but we'll be fine. So we will see what happens with uh, that there. But Mitch Barnhart over at Kentucky made some headlines as well, kind of saying nobody's getting a new practice facility in more words than one. And so will that make Calipari unhappy? Will that make Stoops unhappy? I don't know. We'll see. But the drama will continue over at Kentucky. Meanwhile, uh, Kentucky did hold their first fall scrimmage on Saturday, and they got a healthy number of players returning. Will Levis, Chris Rodriguez, Jacquez Jones, DeAndre Square, some big stars, and Mark Stoops noted there have been no uh, major, only minor injuries that tested some of their position depth. And so uh, good news there coming out of the weekend for Kentucky. Not such great news over at Georgia as their offense – Lost a veteran playmaker following an ankle injury this past week in practice. Third-year wide receiver Arian Smith will need surgery to repair the injury and will miss at least the rest of fall camp and likely some time into the regular season. That's according to Seth Emerson of The Athletic. Smith has missed time the last two seasons as five catches in his career for 188 yards. Some of his highlights last year, 35-yard touchdown uh, catch against Missouri couple catches against UAB, a 61-yarder for a touchdown. Uh, He's been a big big play threat for the Bulldogs. Goes back to 2020 where he made his first career catch. He's also a track athlete. Kirby Smart confirmed the reports. Aaron Smith dealing with that injury. He said, look, the poor kid can't catch a break. He's had an injury like right when he first got here, jumping in a long jump hit. Then he had another injury his sophomore year. He's worked hard to get back. He gave up track this year. And I gave that up so he could have a successful football season. A tough ankle sprain, a high ankle sprain. I don't know how long it's going to take. It's going to require surgery, but the good news is it's not broken. Hoping to get him back. Uh, Again, Smith will miss the rest of fall camp, possibly into the season. We just don't know how long. Kirby Smart also talking a little bit about his team, saying that the freshman running backs, he said, we got two young guys that are very different. They're a little heavier, thicker. I thought both those guys had a good scrimmage. When they need to be, uh, where they need to be in pass protection, they're not there yet, but they are hard to tackle. 
Meanwhile, over at Ole Miss, they have their quarterback battle still going on between Jackson Dart and Luke Altmeyer. And over the weekend, Lane Kiffin talking with the media following Saturday's scrimmage said, wasn't all that impressed with both of them. He said both of the top guys took too many sacks during the non-contact scrimmage and did not play very well overall. He said, I thought uh, Dart and Altmeyer didn't play great, took too many sacks, even though we're not hitting them. They would have been sacks. He did, however, seem to be impressed with Kincaid Dent. He said, we play a little game in the quarterback room predicting the MVPs for the day, and I try to guess them. I would like to go on a record say that I picked Kincaid to be the MVP today. They may have that. Uh, they may have had something to do with the play calling down there to get him some extra touchdown passes to win that bet, but he did a good job, made a lot of plays. So still no clarity yet on will it be Luke Altmaier, will it be Jackson Dart? A lot of people just think Dart with his talent. Coming on from USC, he's going to but still don't miss. And uh, after Saturday scrimmage, Lake Kiffin also talked about the putter they found, Charlie Pollock. He said they found him at, quote, a keg party or something. He said he didn't know a lot about him. They found him at a frat house. He said the coach just said, hey, someone go find a punter around campus. And we found one that actually used to punt in Division One. so you never know. Uh, Pollock previously punted at Nevada. So don't know how true that story is, but pretty funny if it is. Meanwhile, over at Alabama, Nick Saban and their group, uh, they had just – Two of their top 10 pass catchers from 2021 available in Saturday's scrimmage. So that means a lot of the young guys having a chance to step up. Nick Saban talking to reporters after the, after the scrimmage said that Kobe Prentice was a standout among the young wideouts. So we made some really good plays there. We dropped some balls. I think Kobe Prentice, I think he had like five catches. He was probably the guy that stood out most among the young players. He was a four-star recruit, number 78 overall prospect in 2022. That each and every day is a different guy that shows that they have some ability to do some things in a really positive way. Meanwhile, over at Arkansas, KJ Jefferson expected to get better this season, according to a report from On Three Sports. Arkansas could use Malik Hornsby as both a wide receiver and quarterback this season to go with KJ Jefferson. Uh, KJ talking about Hornsby said, so just the athleticism that he has and brings to the table when two quarterbacks are on the field. You don't know what's going on. You don't know who's going to have the ball. Just being able to create chaos for the defensive side of the ball and having a guy like Malik with his athleticism, being able to hand him the ball, he will stretch the defense. We like it. So, look, not every quarterback likes sharing the field with another quarterback, but A.J. Jefferson seems to be a fan of it. Meanwhile, over at Auburn, their quarterback battle continues on. Is it going to be T.J. Finley, Zach Calzada, or somebody else? Brian Harson commented on the battle this week saying Calzada was solid after he threw a touchdown pass in their scrimmage, but was also very complimentary of T.J. Finley. Finley was the leader of a 14-play drive that showed how uh, in control of the offense he was. Harson said, quote, he understands what we're trying to accomplish. He conceptually picks things up very quickly, listens to the details and all the little nuances of the plays, what everybody's supposed to be doing. If there's a coaching point made, not just for him, but for everybody, he'll remember that coaching point, be able to echo it whenever it comes up and reminds the guys. So, Again, still no clarity there. Finley, Calzada, who's going to win the Auburn job? Over at South Carolina, Spencer Radler not getting some shine. It's the other guy getting some shine, Luke Doty. Shane Beamer praising the uh, backup quarterback, presumably, and Doty saying, I'm so impressed with Luke Doty right now. Uh, maybe trying to send a message to Spencer Radler. Hey, work a little harder. Do a little bit better. I'm going to praise Luke Doty. Uh, Beamer was complimentary of Doty, saying, look, he stayed here. He's made Spencer better. He's made himself better, and it's showing right now. So excited about all of our quarterbacks, but really proud of what Luke has been doing. So, unlike Spencer Rattler's in jeopardy of losing his job, but maybe trying to send him a message there. Meanwhile, over at Missouri, Eli Drinkwitz talking a little bit about uh, his group of running backs and some of the young guys that need to step up. He said, we've been really proud of Cody Schrader. He's been our most consistent running back so far in camp. He is a transfer from Truman State. Was a unanimous GLVC Offensive Player of the Year first team selection. Just a couple weeks from the Alabama-Texas game. And bad news over in Austin as Sajai Hall, the former Alabama wide receiver, has been suspended indefinitely after an arrest on Thursday by university police. Uh, details emerged that report, uh, reportedly... He caused damage uh, to a $600 vehicle boot. So you assume his 
car probably got a boot on it and was going to be towed or whatever. So he's indefinitely suspended. We'll see when he is reinstated and if he'll be back for that uh, game against Alabama, which is coming up in just a couple of weeks. And lastly, over at Tennessee, Jalen Hyatt, not mincing words about Tennessee, Tennessee's offense this year. The Vols wide receiver talking with reporters said, I hadn't thought about any transfer things or anything like that because I can tell what we can do in this offense. This offense is going to be the best in the country. I can tell you that right now. That's why I didn't want to leave it all. I love these guys. So we will see uh, Jalen Hyatt be a big piece of this high-flying offense and if Tennessee will have the best offense in the country. In recruiting news, it was a very busy recruiting weekend. We start over at Florida as Will Norman committed to Billy Napier, four-star offensive lineman out of IMG Academy, five, a six foot five, 290 pounds, number 21 defensive lineman in this group. Then they got Cameron James, a four-star 2023 defensive lineman out of the Orlando area, staying home. He's the number 28 defensive lineman in this class. And then Kelby Collins, another four-star defensive lineman out of Gardendale. He picked up a, a ton of different offers, six foot five, 280, pound, 280 pounds. He's the number six defensive lineman in this group. All three of those guys going to Florida uh, this past weekend. So, man, that is uh, three monster pickups on the D-line for Billy Napier's group. Meanwhile, over at Alabama, Nick Saban picked up a 2023 offensive lineman named Raymond Polito. Six foot six, 345 pounds. He's a three-star, uh, number 39 offensive tackle in this group. Over at LSU, Kylan Jackson staying home. Blue chip safety out of the Zachary area in Louisiana. Four-star recruit. Had a ton of offers. Six foot one, 195 pounds. Rated the number 10 safety in this class. And now gives LSU their 20th commitment for this group. Ranked number six in the nation. And over at Tennessee, or rather over at Mississippi State, dipping into Tennessee, Mike Leach is going to get his next uh, future quarterback in Chris Parson, the elite 11 quarterback out of the Tennessee area, made his announcement over the weekend on YouTube. Six feet tall, 200 pounds, rated a four-star, the number 10 product out of Tennessee, number 19 quarterback in this class, going to Mike Leach's Mississippi State program. 15 commitments in this group for Mississippi State. And then lastly, the note for Tennessee, Ricky Gibson, a three-star cornerback out of the state of Alabama. He committed to Tennessee over the weekend. Number 43 corner in this class. Gives the Vols 20 recruits in this group. Uh, linebacker Brayshawn Littlejohn picked Mizzou over the weekend. Three-star prospect. Gives uh, Eli Drinkwitz 10 commitments in this group. And then lastly, Brian Harson picking up a 2023 cornerback in J.C. Hart, staying home. Three-star prospect, number 122 corner in the nation. Number 45th ranked prospect from the state of Alabama. He is coming to uh, Auburn. So that gives Auburn seven commitments for 2023. And there you have it. That is the latest news going on around the conference. Tons of recruiting stuff to get to. Thank you guys again for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Coming up next, our conversation with Brad Nessler of CBS Sports. But first... I want to remind you guys about our friends over at LinkedIn. As you gear up for the fall, you need the right people on your team, and that was going to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free and create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond in the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. We've got simple tools like screening questions make it easy for you to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helping you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Every week, nearly 40 million job seekers are visiting LinkedIn. Go post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Always good to catch up with the man with the greatest pipes in all of sports broadcasting, the great Brad Nessler. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. How about you? 
We're doing good. It's a busy week. It's always fun to catch up with you here at SEC Media Days. I got to ask you this first because obviously the big news that we've all been tracking like the last year or two that the college football game's coming back. Have they reached out to you at all? Is the voice going to come back? <laughs> I don't think so. I think I, I think I had my 12 year run or however many years it was I did that. I had a lot of people ask me that though, and and uh, you know at the time, uh, you know it, it was all kind of by nil and all of that. That's that was the beginning of all of this, and and it started with a basketball game. Dick Vitale and I were doing the basketball game, and Ed O'Bannon took offense, you know, to the fact that that was pretty much Ed O'Bannon in, in the video, and it was. And uh, for the football games, you could tell who Tim Tebow was, and you could tell who all the stars were. So um, I don't blame the guys for wanting a, a piece of that pie, and I, I think it's great that they're going to bring it back. I don't know in what uh, capacity or who they'll have do it, but they, they are in for a lot of work because it was a lot of recording <laughs> and a lot of hours. And I was compensated well, but man, it got repetitive when you're doing the same exact play from every yard line you could conceivably do and having to stitch it all together. But uh, the folks at EA Sports were good to me, and I, I hope they find somebody good that uh, – can take the spot. I mean, that's literal. You're like first and 10 from the one, first yep. and 10 from the two. And you just keep going. And <laughs> the plays just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I would finally tell the producers, I said, listen, I can't do, I can't do a 98 yard touchdown and then a 97 yard touchdown. I'm going to blow my pipes out, you know? So <laughs> we had to kind of spread out the big plays and the little plays and, and uh, it all worked out. Okay. But uh, you know, got down to, it was just Kirk and I, Lee was in the game for a while. Uh, I think we had Aaron Andrews, I think, for a couple of years doing the sideline stuff. And a lot of times we didn't even record it together. And then, uh, and then it got to, we were Kirk and I would be in the same room at least at one point, just because of something to do with unions or whatever, Kirk and Lee were actually in one room and I was in a different room and that wasn't considered recording together. So it was got kind of strange. And we got to the last year and they took about 5,000 pictures of Kirk and I in this this big cubicle that had cameras everywhere, and we were finally going to be in the game. Our, our faces were going to be in the game. And uh, my mom was still alive at the time, and she was so excited. She was going to buy all the nephews a game so she could see what I looked like uh, in, in cartoon form. But we never got around to that. They canceled the game on us. Well, it is funny that all these, you know, they call it all, all these people on the Internet have created different things where they've, uh, you know, they've modified the game and your voice lives on still in a lot of these games going yeah. on. You know? Yeah. Well, I still have a lot of kids that come up to me and, and they say, Mr. Nestler and da, 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 da. They don't have any idea that I may be still doing football games at three 30 on Saturday, <laughs> but man, they can wear those games out, you know? So either they'll say my dad remembers uh, when you used to do games or my grandfather. And I go, well, I'm still doing games. I just don't do them on video anymore. <laughs> uh, feels like, Vern didn't leave the game that long ago, but then I look back and man, it's been a handful of years now. You doing the CBS games? What's what's it been like, and what's this run been like uh, being with with Gary? It's been great. You know, it's our second run together. We spent almost eight years together. The first time, Gary and I, at ESPN and ABC, and uh, you know, um, I just texted Vern the other day. His birthday was Sunday. He was eighty-two, and so I told him that I would have a. I would have cocktail in his honor a little bit later that day because I knew he was watching golf and so was I. So we keep in touch. Uh, he's proud of, uh, you know, what I've done and we've always been really good friends. So I still call, make sure he and Nancy are doing okay. And uh, he checks in on us occasionally. Uh, once in a while, he even shows up at a game or some function. So uh, it's great when he's around. All right. Favorite, favorite uh, venue to call a game from? Oh, boy. They're all great. I mean, they really are. I just... Uh, you know, I don't mind doing games in Athens because I live in Georgia. That, that's, a, that's a home game for me, and I can be home for dinner almost. Uh, you know, Auburn and Alabama, either place, LSU at night, we can go down the list. Um, you know, Arkansas is going to be more fun. Tennessee's relevant again. Uh, Florida will be crazy when they get it all straightened out. I don't have a – I guess I don't have a favorite, but I, I don't really have one where I go, oh, I don't want to go there, you know. Every time we go to – the Grove is cool. I mean, uh, every place we go, we have – a lot of fun, and uh, we, we find something to do. All right, let me phrase it this way. There's got to be a place when you see it coming up on the schedule, you go, all right, Friday night, we know we're having dinner here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. There's a few of those. Sometimes I even like the things where uh, usually for the uh, when we go down to Florida, uh, whatever game we might do earlier in the season, they kind of let us have the whole courtyard, and uh, we have this gigantic picnic, and we got our whole crew there. And so we have all 80 people together, and we're – playing games and having a cigar or having a drink or making burgers and chicken, whatever. Uh, that's kind of fun for me. I like, I like the picnic atmosphere we have when we go down to Gainesville.
more with Brad Nessler in just a second, but I want to remind you guys about our friends over at Bilt Bar. If you have not tried the Bilt Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. There's a new flavor out. If you haven't tried it yet, covered in chocolate, that's right. They've done it again. It's the Cookie Dough Chunk Puffs. Have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, covered in 100% real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it, and it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs, only 160 calories, have a whopping 15 grams of protein packed in their run to built.com right now. Go grab you a box. Again, healthy and tasty chocolate covered cookie dough with a light, fluffy texture. So good. Go check them out. The uh, new cookie dough chunk puff, whether you need a snack for your workout, a late night treat, or just need to grab a quick bite, built is the perfect protein bar. And they taste better than a candy bar. Ditch the calories, fat, and sugar. Go grab yourself a built bar. Go to built.com right now. Use our promo code locked on15. That's L O C K E D O N 1 5. That's going to get you 15% off your order. Use our promo code locked on15 more over at built.com. Let me just get a couple of football thoughts from you. Uh, I look around the conference this year. I was at the Manning Passing Academy a few weeks ago and talking with Will Levis and Hendon Hooker, a lot of these guys. It feels like this, this is going to be a really strong year for quarterbacks in the SEC. Is that what you see? Yeah, I, I really do. I mean, you start with the Heisman Trophy winner and you go through a national championship uh, winning coat or quarterback. And, uh, you know, everybody else really in the conference, either through the portal transfers, that type of things, or kids that are just another year more experience feels that way. And I know I've, I've been down and that's, that's a really fun thing to go to. It's uh, not a lot of people get to do that. So uh, the Academy is a good place to meet all those guys and get to know them on a personal level a little bit more. And um, Archie told me this year was a good one. And I saw some of the pictures. Yeah, Manning, just terrible people. So yeah, rude and just yeah. terrible to work with. No, I can't. They're, they're great. Um, but it, it is uh, interesting, though, when we talk about the quarterbacks. So we talk about Bryce Young and all these other guys. Why? Like, I've seen these preseason, you know, top five quarterback lists. Stetson Bennett is still not getting any credit. What's the deal? It's unbelievable. I've been in the kid's corner for a year and a half or whatever he first started. Uh, his first go around as a starter and then getting hurt in the, I guess, it was the Florida game that year. And, uh, and then coming back and having the year he had last year and nobody expected him to even be a starter. And um, you can ask anybody around here. I, I put up and, and stood up for him for so long, and I'm so happy for him. It, it seems like he's in his 12th year right now. I know that. But see, he's been around a while. But uh, efficiency-wise, I don't know anybody I'd rather have, to be honest with you. There's going to be guys that will have, you know, 5,000 passing yards maybe, like a Bryce Young or whatever. And um, he's just never mentioned there. I guess it's because of his – NFL stock is non-existent, basically. I mean, the guy's going to be a doctor or a dentist or something. I'm, I'm sure somewhere down the line. But I had people asking me this year that really, you know, didn't pay that much attention to the SEC and said, I don't get it. You know, why don't they talk about this kid? And I said, because he's 5'11". And, and nobody <laughs> nobody likes that, you know. I said if he was 6'3 or 6'4, it'd be a whole different story. But efficiency-wise, I'm not sure there's anybody I'd rather have than him. Big picture, um, do you like where college football is trending with all the – mixing up of conferences and all that or is it just kind of it is what it is I, I guess it is what it is you know I, I was talking to some people today and saying you know I used to do games 35 years ago and it's drastically changed the game has changed uh the fact that you didn't have to have a quarterback back in those days that was anything close to what we see now uh you know the seven on seven passing camps and the Manning Academy and all that kind of stuff it's just it's changed the game period if you don't have a elite quarterback you're probably not going to win and and now the transfer portal, NIL deals, it's uh, its just like NFL free agency. So from the beginning of my career to what I see now, literally every morning I wake up and go, what's going to change today? And and it almost does that, you know, on a daily basis. So um, can't wait till tomorrow. As Joe Name would say, can't wait till tomorrow because I get better looking every day. Yeah, they're going to go, Brad, <laughs> we're going to see you to Washington and Oregon and yeah. then back to Auburn. I mean, oh, it's yeah. going to be it's gonna I, be crazy. I did that back in the day. I did one whole Pac-12 season with Gary. And, oh, my God, so many red-eye flights. It was unbelievable. <laughs> and we would just get home and just get reacclimated, and we had to take off and go back out there. So 
Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be different. That's for sure. Last well, thing for you, what's a Brad Bessler off season like? Is it is it on the fishing? Is it on the boat? Is it on the beach? Where? What are you doing? Yeah, it's some of that. I got a, a, I have a lake house, and um, I spend quite a bit of time on the boat. And I usually fish off the dock because everybody seems to come over to my dock to fish. So I thought, why do I even start the boat up? If, if they're casting underneath my dock, why can't I just fish right off my dock? Uh, took a few small trips, nothing big this year. Just kind of weekend trips and. Went to Todd Blackledge's wedding uh, down in New Orleans, and I've got one more function to do next week with the Ric Flair roast up in Nashville, and then I will actually shave this thing off, and I'll get down to football <laughs> business. And, and I have to get down to business because I don't know half as much as the fans know about their teams right now, but hopefully by Saturday, every Saturday at 3.30, hopefully I know almost as much as they do. Yeah, the transfer portal makes you have to – got to stay on your toes. Right? i got to start all over. It's just no, – I, I might as well not look at any notes from last yeah. year because I don't know who's – I think there's like 47% of the quarterbacks that are going to start in Power 5 this year are transferred from somewhere else. <laughs> so I'll just look at old tape when they, and they're in a different uniform. Yeah, you're like, wait, Jermaine Burton, when did he get to Alabama? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So the great – He'll be a good one there too. The great Brad Nussler. Thanks so much for the time, Good to see you, man. All right, thank you. Thanks. There you have it. That is our uh, interview with Brad Nessler. Appreciate him uh, catching up with us from uh, SEC Media Days, but uh, kind of looking ahead to the season. Of course, like he said, he's got to start diving into his homework and doing all his uh, research on where guys are now because the transfer portal has certainly changed the game, even for broadcasters trying to prepare for their shows and figure out who's where and all that kind of stuff. All right, that is going to do it for this edition of Locked on SEC. Again, thank you guys for making us your first listen every day. Now you'll make your second listen. Check out some of our other great podcasts all along the Locked On Podcast Network. What's your favorite school? Ole Miss? We got Locked On Ole Miss. We got Locked On Razorbacks. We got Locked On uh, LSU. Just about every school you're looking for, we got you covered wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Chris Gordy. Thank you guys so much again for listening and subscribing. Check us out on YouTube if you haven't done so yet. We'll be back tomorrow as we are here five days a week getting you ready for the start of another SEC football season. Talk to you guys tomorrow.